It's time to react to my Euro 2024 predictions I made before the ball had been kicked at the start of the tournament. If you want to enjoy, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section down below if you made predictions for the start of the tournament. How did you get on in the comment section down below? Here we go then. We're going to begin with groups. Group A, I said Germany first, Switzerland second, Scotland third and the Hungary fourth. So in the first group... Two out of four, the top two getting spot on, of course. It's Scott and Hungary, which could have gone either way on that final match between the two, getting wrong. And overall, I'm not too disappointed in this. A lot of people had the top two in that order. It was just the bottom two. Um, the arrangement of them was different for everyone. But I went with Scotland. Of course, it's sort of the one I wanted to see happen. Uh, and overall, it didn't, of course. So I'm happy with that one. Group A, two out of four, not too bad at all. Uh, and we get, of course, the two that qualify, the main two, spot on anyway. Into Group B, I said Spain, Italy, Croatia, Albania. Am I a genius? Do I see it happening? You got all four right. Four out of four on that one. Not bad at all. So it's from the first two groups. Six out of possible eight. Not bad at all. Um, Spain, of course, are the runaways. I did predict that. I was a bit unsure on Italy. A really underwhelming performance at the Euros. And, uh, yeah, they just broke come second. Croatia, third, quite underwhelming as well. I thought this group would be really close. And Albania, fourth, was sort of the one. But they did impress me more than what the position I put them in suggests. They were actually really good. And uh, I have to keep an eye out on Albania in the next few competitions because they're actually pretty good. Group C, I said England top, Serbia second, Denmark third, Slovenia fourth. I tried to be a bit different. We all knew England were going to win the group. Serbia second was my sort of wild pick throughout the whole tournament. I was expecting a bit more from them. Um, of course, they played till the whistle of the game against, of course, Slovenia, where they got the draw. Uh, the game against Denmark, they, you know, got a draw, but they probably could have won that one. And then the game against England, they probably could, could have got a draw out of. So, overall, um, Serbia had the potential to, to get through. Um, it's just they, they played some awful football, didn't they? And Vlahovic, Mitrovic weren't really utilised up top. And overall, it was a little bit disappointing from Serbia. Into third, I did put Denmark. Once again, this wasn't far off becoming correct because of the, the far day situation between Slovenia and Denmark. Um, but overall, Denmark, I have got them one place off here. Not too bad at all. Uh, they, they haven't had a great tournament, though. I know... The last few Euros, we've all been hyping up Denmark, but they still haven't really delivered much of our expectations. Yes, they got knocked out to the host Germany, who were unbelievable. But even in the group stage, you know, it was, uh, was it two draws or, or three draws overall. It was quite a lot of draws for, for Denmark this Euro. So, yeah, uh, a little bit underwhelming, but a few good performances in there from Denmark. And, of course, fourth, I put Slovenia, their first Euros uh, in 24 years, I was expecting them to struggle a little bit. They still haven't got their first ever Euro win, but they've done themselves really well, getting, of course, to the knockout rounds as well, only losing to Portugal on penalties. So very good display from Slovenia at the Euros, and they're not disappointed at all to have that one uh, wrong. Into Group D then, I had France, Netherlands, Austria, then Poland in that order. Overall, only Poland out of them getting spot on. Of course, France... Awful from, from their Euros. I know they've got to the semi-final, but in the group stage, just just not good enough uh, throughout the whole tournament, really. Netherlands second. They did grow into the tournament. Of course, they ended up finishing third. And Austria, I put them third. They finished first. Really, really good for Austria. And I would have loved to see them uh, go all the way. But, of course, that Turkey game, the, the, the one to, of course, uh, defeat them in the end. But, yeah, once again, not too bad in that one. Another one correct. Group E is when I've got none of them right. I put Belgium top, Ukraine second, Romania third, Slovakia fourth. When in fact, of course, it was Romania first, Belgium second, Slovenia, uh, sorry, Slovakia third, and Ukraine fourth. Ukraine, of course, becoming the first ever side at the Euros to get four points and not qualify for the knockout rounds, which is incredible. This group was awesome. A lot of shocks. Of course, every side won one, drew one, and lost one. Um, and overall, Belgium, the team I put top, they disappointed. Ukraine as well weren't as good. But Romania and Slovakia, for me, really did impress. And once again, just like um, other teams like Albania, we'll have to look out for them in further competitions because they have got potential in there to do well. Into Group F then, I've got Portugal, Turkey, Czech Republic and Georgia in that order. I wanted Georgia to succeed. I just rated 
the Czech Republic with uh, Ivan Hasek's uh, record going into the Euros didn't quite materialise and in the end they've got the top two bang on uh, but not too disappointed in that. So overall from the from the group stage out of the 24 teams I've got 10 of them bang on uh, of course group B spot on completely but group E none of them right so a big contrast there uh, in, in my predictions but overall just under half correct not too bad at all let me know in the comments how you got on with that one. The best third place teams, I put a Group A team, I put Scotland, I put a Group B team, Croatia, who are so, so close. I put uh, a Group C team in Denmark to get through, and of course, a Group F team to get through in the Czech Republic. Actually, it was the Netherlands from Group D, uh, Georgia from Group F, it was Slovakia from Group E, Slovenia from Group C, and then Hungary from Group A and Croatia from Group B were the teams that miss out. So overall, I got uh, the teams to qualify from two out of the four groups spot on. So, you know, a bit of a gamble there. Uh, and only, of course, uh, one side to qualify, I think I got correct. No, I didn't even get any of them. Even more disappointing than I originally thought. Into the knockouts then. Of course, I had Spain playing Scotland. Spain, of course, played Georgia. I had Germany versus Serbia. Germany played Denmark. Portugal, Denmark, it was actually Portugal versus Slovenia. Had Portugal, uh, we just done that one. We had Netherlands playing Ukraine. It was actually Netherlands versus Romania, of course. Had Belgium versus Croatia. Of course, it was Belgium versus France. I had France versus Turkey predicted. It was, of course, it was Austria versus Turkey. England, the Czech Republic, it was England versus Slovakia. And I had Switzerland versus Italy, which actually happened. So that's something to take away from the round of 16. Um, overall, a few of them surprised then. Uh, of course, we expected the likes of France to top their group. Of course, they come, only come second. We expected um, the likes of, of course, Denmark to come second. They did. Well, I didn't expect them to come second, of course. Uh, we expected Netherlands to come second, of course, third. Uh, Belgium to top their group as well didn't happen. So there's quite a few teams that did underperform or overperform at this tournament so far. Into the quarterfinals, of course, I had Spain, Germany to play. That actually happened in the start of the tournament. I did say Germany would win this game, but of course it was Spain. And for a long time in the build up to this game, I said the winner of this one would win the tournament. And that is what happened. We had Portugal, Netherlands as my prediction. It was, of course, Turkey versus Netherlands. Uh, Portugal actually played France, but I predicted it to be work out as Belgium versus France. And then England versus Italy, where in fact it was England, Switzerland. So very close to getting that last one right. Uh, overall, not, not too bad at all. Of course, I predicted Portugal to get this far. France as well. Uh, Turkey surprised me a little bit there as well. So not too bad at all there. I did think we'd see Italy, England again. But of course, Italy massively underperformed at this year's Euros. Into the semi-final, I said it would be Germany, Portugal and France, England. I feel like everyone going into the tournament had these four teams at, of course, the, the semi-final stage. Well, in fact, it was Spain, France and Netherlands, England. So I've got two out of the four teams there to reach the semi-final spot on in France and England. Um, the, probably the other two teams, Netherlands and, and Spain, probably were the uh, obvious choice, maybe, out of them. But not too bad at all there. And of course, in the final, it was Spain-England. I predicted it to be a repeat of 2016 with Portugal-France. And Spain winning, of course, I said France to win it. So overall, I'm not too disappointed in my predictions at all. I feel like we've done quite well. And if you have a look at the golden boot going into the tournament, I said it would be the top three of Harry Kane, Mbappe and Ronaldo. Harry Kane's on the list. Mbappe really did disappoint. Only one goal from him. And Ronaldo didn't even score a goal which we all expected him to. In the end, of course, the golden boot has been shared between six players, all on three goals. Uh, Gakpo, Olmos, Scranz, Musiala, Kane and Mkhitaryan. Uh, so, yeah, we got that one horribly wrong. Only Kane in there, which I'll t sort of take that one. You know, he's, you know, I did put him top of the golden boot and he will get uh, one of the six awards there. So I'll take that one. Best player, I said, I put, I put three nominations up. Mbappe, Saliba and Bruno Fernandes, of course. Player of tournament went to Rodri, uh, so not quite there. I was heavily back in either Portugal or France to do well at this tournament. And then wild card, I said Serbia or Ukraine, and both of them come fourth. So what do I know? Well, in truth, of course, wild card probably have to say the likes of uh, Slovenia, Slovakia, Georgia, Turkey, maybe even Switzerland in there as well. So yeah, we got that one horribly wrong. Uh, and also, just for a bit of fun, of course, you notice we did the weekly predictions. 
Overall then, out of the 51 games, I predicted spot on predictions, 7 out of the 51. Um, round of 16 was the best, I predicted 3 out of the 8 games spot on. And overall the percentage, this is 13.7% of the predictions uh, I got spot on. So actually, when you look at it like that, the percentage, it's not too bad at all, uh, in my opinion. Overall then, out of the predictions as well, out of the ones we predicted for the right outcome, I said 27 out of the 51 games I got the right outcome for. Um, so that's 52.9% I predicted the right outcome for. That's not too bad as well. If you guys want to work it out, of course, at home, just do the amount of games you got right, divided by 51, the overall games, of course, then times 100. And let me know in the comments how well you did as well. I'm really interested to know. Did you beat me on predictions, basically? And a huge thank you for watching this video. Let me know how you did for the Euros. For me, I'm not too disappointed with these predictions. I've got Group A really well. I've got two of the four teams to reach the semi-final spot on. Um, I've got Harry Kane at the Golden Boot as well. So overall, not too bad. Room for improvement. But to be honest, my international level of knowledge isn't as good as my club level knowledge. So for this, I'll definitely take it. Hope to improve towards the 2026 World Cup. Thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the Euro content on the channel. There's still a little bit more to come just to round off the Euros and then back to club action. So a massive thank you for watching the Euro content on the channel. Hopefully you've all enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one very soon, guys. Take care. Goodbye.